on this episode of whatever I call this. I don't know really what I'm doing. This is just kind of obvious, guys. But honestly, having time for yourself is the most important thing you can do. And that's why I learned this year. I think this episode is about how one, how I grew so much compared to the last year. Ever since the buzz, 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 and do you feel like a school? This is more of a solo cast at this point, but it's not bad. I think each and one of you can like learn. I think this is a year of change. Like I feel like this is like a different time skip or a time pass. And this is gonna be like a diary. At least not necessarily a whole diary. But close enough for like a little archive of what I accomplished and maybe you could take a lesson in that I don't really know everything is so confusing life is confusing and we can all understand that finding your hobbies and even finding out your own little secrets can mean so much and realize a lot I'll tell myself in this that like you have so many plans but you gotta stick with one like it's a what to say jack of all trades master of none or something like that I think the whole thing is master. Wait. I'm not even going to edit that part out. I think it's about jack of all trades, master of none. And there's the last part to it. But if you're well balanced, you can be well balanced on all the trades you do. When it comes to glass blowing, tennis, knitting, I feel like if you're good at all of that, like exceptionally, like maybe an average or a little above average, you're golden. I don't think you need to be a master of all trades or one trade. Um, that's I think that's what I'm trying to figure out this year. It's like what can I dibble in, dabble in, and make myself improve on that one topic. To not become a master, but like to get the concepts and the grass on it. Like this is an experience. Everything is a fucking experience. Like, uh, this year, I learned that to have a little backbone is still a process. There's so many instances where people use me for a car, for rides. Last year was for money, and that was a mistake I will never go back on. Never. Someone owes me like 2K. They're paying it back, but it's a process. So that's the lesson learned. And people never change. No matter how hard you push it, or even when you don't push it, like, they're never going to change. And that includes myself and yourself. You're not going to change unless you want to change. And that is a strong saying now. It's cliche. But it's true. I don't even have a topic list on this one or anything like that. 
I'm gonna roll with it. I'm gonna see how this works and see how this goes. There's so many stories I want to say and tell and share. But like, where do I even begin? So this is gonna be basically an audio log of like Borderlands that you just picked up and rambles. So yeah, this is gonna be one of those what no vlogs. Logs. Um logs. Audio logs. My I don't know. Like my friend went crazy. Not crazy. I shouldn't say crazy. They went. They have different drivers. And they finally got to them. And. Yep. And left. And then dealing with psychosis in your own spirals. It's crazy how much people around you do mold you into something good or something worse than you were before. And you learn to deal. Sorry I'm yawning. But you learn to deal with other people and yourself at the same time. Like you're raising yourself mostly and you see what you don't like what you do like in a friendship or where things are going and it's up to you to make that change and it's a hard change like I lost a best friend for 11 years because I don't like how our friendship was anymore and I kind of asked for the bare minimum And they weren't there for me when I need them the most, most of the time, or in general. It just didn't work out. There's friends where it's just really weird how everything just molds. And it seems so out of place, but... It's not out of place for you. It feels foreign. But it's a foreign feeling that you need to experience to make yourself comfortable in that to be aware of A, B, and C. And a lot, a lot comes in from self-growth. And there's not a lot of self growth anymore in the world because everyone are dicks. Everyone are assholes. We do find a few rare gems of like. Genuinely, like genuine good people. And you just gotta work with them to not get their guard back up and like knock the brakes down by layer. It takes time. But you gotta work with people to understand them. So arguing and fighting is like a normal thing in any relationship. That's good or bad. Friendship, etc., etc. But it really does come down to how much are you willing to go through to get the understanding of the person some people have a lot of patience others just don't and you can see that's a good thing or a bad thing I got a shit ton of patience I feel like that's a bad thing because in the long run it could screw you in the end if you don't stop it if you don't voice etc etc 
it's so much not dilute not dilutions a lot more kind of setting up boundaries for yourself and how much you can take there are certain things I'll give you an example like as they bring up a topic I hate when people say oh you're like family just when it comes to like friends as a whole because like if you actually I'll, I'll I'll give you the best example of it. My friend, I'll call her Street, because she's like a hood rat. Alright? Hoodie. We'll, we'll, we'll let's call her Hoodie, right? We all look really great and whatnot. And then she's like, Your uncle's sad because she has a kid. And I'm like, Nah. Because. what could happen in the future we have no feelings like that for each other but in the future you just sabotage everything also it's my other friend Hoop. yeah these names are just kind of names for everyone but Hoop, right they're the same way. I'm like, no, nah, you never know what's going to happen in the future. Like, no. That could go for guy, girl, same sex, different sex. There's like, I think one person that I'm okay with saying that shit like that because it's kind of always has been a thing since day one. Rather than, oh, you were at this level, now you're like, oh, your family. I don't know. I do not know how to explain it, but I do not like getting into that brother or sister or uncle zone. Because you never know what the future holds, no matter what happens. I realize that. I realize you don't have to be constantly with somebody to have a friendship because my friend Tommy moved last year and we still are tight and nothing really changed. There's so much that happened this year. With this even the whole year, it's been seven months and so much happened. It feels like it's been two years. Time really is only irrelevant no time is irrelevant it's not relevant the only time it's relevant if you have like a oh, lunch is at 5 o'clock or on to lunch like that's the only time it's relevant there is a lot of things that happen in the course of one month even two months because when my friend lost control it only took two months three tops it's the world is a roller coaster and you just have to ride it it's life is on cruise control and that's what I've been saying a lot because life is on cruise control you are a body. You have a soul. Your body is just how you interact, but your soul is just here being it. And it's on cruise control. I'm not sure if that even makes sense to a lot of people because it turns out a lot of my ideas and what I say and my comparisons are not even relevant 
because a lot of people don't understand them, which is honestly valid. I'm okay with that because I am different. I always mean being different brings different perspectives. But with that also comes with not understanding, misunderstanding, confusion. But that's where self improvement comes along. You're not changing the thoughts and your point of view. You just have to word it differently or explain your explain yourself so they can understand. You don't always owe someone an explanation, but if it's something like that personally or something like that, you should explain like all right, no, I mean this way that you took it and break it down. No word by word, but like phrase by phrase. And hopefully it'll give you time to say your piece and not have emotion take over. Because when a sense of emotion takes over, everything is irrational. They're too in their head to be like, all right, I understand. And that's affecting for everybody. Give it time to cool off. Try to re-explain yourself. And it'll be peachy. Like, this year, I wanted to, uh... What the... I don't... I had no goals this year, actually. I lost weight by gaining it back a little bit. And I made a goal... A goal... A cool, a cool list. A goal list of what I want to kind of work on improved. I don't know if I improved on much, but there's like some things that I did improve on. Like, I realize I'm scared of commitment. I was scared of secure security. Because for a bit, I was a drifter. I was living like three places. Now, I was moving with pork chop. But we don't know how long they're going to keep the house. There's so much factors that made me mentally not there. And other things happened. It's a very articulate mindset and very articulate I guess beliefs that you should change. Because I have a thing of dropping each friend group after so bad because I feel like my job there is done. Because I did my part, you know, what else, what other benefits can they do exchange or vice versa? It's. Well, they need to understand that you don't always need to be the helper. You don't always need to be the fixer-upper. You just need to do you and see the course. Even if that course is, like, really confusing, it will kind of straighten out. It's like a curvy road. The fence is going to go straight. Oh, there, there's so much. I remember when I was younger... I used to be a shy, very shy, like every other kid, more than normal though, because like my mom sheltered me because of the breakup with my dad and she felt bad. Plus I live in the middle of nowhere, in a small town. It's very, I'll explain that probably in a future episode, I'm more comfortable and get more grasp on what I'm doing. It's, I remember being really shy and like, I got no backbone because I'm a people, people pleaser. I didn't stop doing that. Now, fast forward 18 years later, I'm 26 now, I'm learning you can't be a people pleaser. It'll just hurt you in the long run. 
there is so much you could think about different moments, different core memories of why that happened and how you can overcome it. Like my best friend overdosed on pills, got me to eat. Very nice dude, has a heart, soul, like he's not just everyone goes down a path sorry about that guys everyone comes down to a past you'd be the most Christian boy girl well anything Muslim it just matter like the perfect person and then one thing happens someone dies or someone took her candy I don't know and then just go off the beaten path and change them completely. And that's where drama comes from. And people could feed off the drama all their life and never change. And other people grow from it and be like, all right, this happened. I can't do this anymore. Depending on what the drama is, etc., etc. But it's always a choice. And to make a choice that you're not familiar with, scary. It's scary as fuck. Scary, bro. But it's but it's necessary to go through that so you don't hurt yourself in the long run or repeat your history. It is no no it's so hard to explain right now because I'm living it saying no more simple so simple to just say no but you make up excuses I would say I would say excuses for what just say no that's one thing I've been dealing with a lot lately. Like, learn to say no. Honestly, once I have, was there pretty guilt trip? People like, no, I don't want to do this. You can explain like, I don't want to do this because that's wrong, or I'm fucking tired, or I'm playing to somebody else, etc., etc. It's nothing but small things that do add up it's things that people need to understand and I should put my phone on silent when I do this cause that's what number two but I feel like this is where this is going is going to be this going as in this audio thing I think it's really just going to be me having some guests on I'm probably going to do a couple channels actually this is going to be on Grape Chat or my other reading podcast or a separate one it's four it's going to be a very interesting transition and see how things work and back to what I said earlier I know I'm rambling a lot but this is what I mean about change and being uncomforting and whatnot and trying to find your own path because this is uncomfortable for me because I'm used to talk to myself but the other people listening and the reason I'm doing this is because A, it's for me because I could go back and be like, alright, this is how I was feeling that day or that time period to someone out there listening could learn and understand me, which there's what, 7 billion people, I think one there's a lot of people in the world, so someone is bound to you and they'll be like, alright, I get you. Like, I see you. And when this involves, I'm hoping that 
it will be a community where we all connect safely. No, no cancer culture. That's gonna be a whole nother thing. Like a nice c community of similar-minded people. And we're coming from there, and I want to do this for me for like to know why for like that day what I'm going through, but also see where this goes because I'm interesting on the internet world. I'm a techie guy a little bit. I love tech. And I want to see if I belong in this space. Because if I don't, that's fine. I'm still going to do me. I'm still going to improve whatever I'm doing, like video or audio or etc. etc. Because life is nothing about self improvements at this point. Self improvements and going out of your comfort zone. And I went to my first concert with my sister to the Dirty Heads. Loved it. It was one of my best experiences ever. And it was my fucking sister. And she never heard of the Dirty Heads and she was a fan of them. Like, I love my sister. And I'll talk about my sister probably in the next episode because I'll probably do family next time. But I love her so much because, like, we hated each other when we were growing up. I don't want to say hated, but, like, I threw some peace at her. Things were thrown type deal. I remember a remote got thrown at me. It was crazy. But besides that, when you get older, like, she really was my second mother. My mother's pretty chill. I love my mother, too. But my sister and I are extremely close. Um, so, there's that. But I also went to another court. I also went to another concert with Porkchop. She, uh, the way we met was literally she got drunk at a bar. And we have a mutual friend on Snapchat. So she added me. And we started talking, etc., etc. And then she met me at Turkey Hill the first night where I work. And we were like, after that, we were like best friends. We want crazy adventures. But we went to a concert in New York City, like Lit Frank. I'm the, she's the extrovert, I'm the introvert. And it worked so well because, like, it was such a small lounge. Like, all the performing artists came up, start in the crowd, like, dancing and whatnot. Like, it was a good experience. And then afterwards, her being the extrovert she is, we stayed extra. We got pizza with those folks. Like, we had a good time. But, like, experiences like that also shows a lot about how you are. And you can use those core memories to be like, oh, I really improved since then. Like, I thought they, they had a, uh, someone who took like photos and all, all that stuff. And I talked to him for a bit because he was an, also an introvert and we started connecting. That was a connection that I needed. Oh, I never talked to him after that, but like knowing that I could be part of a group that's now familiar and still find that one person to talk to, like it's a core memory. But I'm going to stop rambling because I could go on hours and hours. This is so. Let me know if you like what you hear and what you want more. There's Everything is endless at this point. So leave a like and comment. And see you next time.